Amen. Good morning everyone. Good evening. Wherever you are, good afternoon. According to the different time, good time for us to have a time of worship and prayer time, you know. And so as we begin, I'll go to uh, Psalm 46. If you will turn with me to the book of Psalm 46. And I'll read verse 1 and 2. And the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, uh, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into uh, the midst of the seas. We've seen God is our strength, and there is no doubt about that. And so fast we are, we, we are, you know, encouraged by Paul to have grateful hearts in every situation, yes. and to worship the Lord. Uh, in every circumstance. Mm. And so if you'll join me to sing this simple song that proclaims what the Lord has done to us yes. and you've not seen it yet. You've seen nothing yet. Great things are in store. And that's why we say You've done for me what no one else would do Imela Jehovah Imela and I'm so grateful for the things you've done in my life, yeah. I just want to say thank you, Lord, uh, in my life. And when all my strength and joy is gone, I will still say thank you, Lord, in my life. Jehovah, in my life. I just want to say thank you. For the things you've done in my life, I've seen nothing here, Lord. Just right now, I wanna say thank you, Lord. In my life, in my life, in my life, it means thank you, Lord. In my life, Jehovah, it means thank you, Lord. From the depths of our heart, to say. Thanks. 
for what the Lord has done for you, for what the Lord has done for your family, for your church. Find a reason to give him thanks because he deserves our thanks and our praise. Let's begin. Father, we thank you. We, we enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. There are so many blessings, Lord, when we count them, when we do the math, Lord. The, the figure shows us that you are incredibly great. The Lord, your goodness is abundant in our lives. That even in the midst of all this mess and all this chaos, God, you're still amazing. And we want to be careful like that one disciple who came back, threw himself to the ground and said, Lord, I needed you and you came through. Lord, I needed this and that and you did it, Lord. Lord, through this difficulty, I saw your hand, Lord. I, I learned a lesson. I matured, Lord. Lord, in all these things, I say thank you. And even for those things that I'm waiting on you for, Lord, I still want to be wise and mature enough to say, Lord, I believe you're at work and you're doing something behind the scenes, oh God. So, Father, we thank you for being our God, for being our Savior, for being our healer, our redeemer, our counselor, our friend. Lord, we worship and we love you for it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. And everybody say amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Bernard, for leading us into that wonderful song. Kefa, we do this again. Karibu sana. We are glad you're joining us. Um, my name is Pastor Brian um, from Hope Church Lovington. Thank you for another time of prayer. Um, we just began by looking at Psalms 46. And uh, that's the place where it says that the Lord is our very present help. You know, he's, he's our God, our friend. And last week we, we had a devotion on a time of prayer titled, you know, help is on the way. Uh, but again, I was just meditating on what to lead us into this week and what to share with us. And it was like a continuation that even though help is on the way, we have to watch and pray. Amen. So, so you have to watch, you have to be careful to see, to open up your eyes, to observe. I remember doing a leadership uh, lesson in, in school and there's this thing that they call going on top of the balcony, going on, on the balcony. And as a leader, you have to go on the balcony so that you can have the right perspective. You know, when you drive into the city of Nairobi, it looks very chaotic. When you look at the traffic and then do these passing left, right, and center, sometimes it's uh, you know, smoky, dusty, and chaotic. But when you're, when you're privileged to go on top of a very tall building, like on KICC, you look and you say, wow, this is a beautiful place, right? And that's the beauty of having the ability to watch, the ability to go on top of a mountain. So today I want to start by... Um, sharing a devotion called Watch and Pray. And we're going to read from the book of Matthew chapter 26. And this is just after the Last Supper. And Jesus is now telling them, let's go up the mountain. So after they have had the Last Supper, and, and that Last Supper was very dramatic. This is where uh, Judas betrayed Jesus. This is where Peter, you know, after being angry, asking who, who dare betray you? And Jesus tells him, now Pia, watch when you na domo, by this time tonight, you will betray me, you know? And, and, and after that, he says, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm going to die. I'm going to suffer. So you can imagine all the chaos. But then he takes them up the mountain, all right? And, and, and in the mountain, you discover when they go there, they fall asleep, you know, because they are tired. And, and that's what happens, that even at the point when we are supposed to pray and, and have the right perspective to watch and pray, the unfortunate bit is sometimes we are too overburdened. To, and I said, you can say, Mejipata ile place, who is yomba? I know there is pressure left, right, and center, but you, you just try to go into your chambers to pray, but you don't have the energy because you're burdened, you're stressed. So, so allow me to read so that I can give us the context here. I want to read from Matthew chapter 26, and I want to start from verse 36 uh, to 45. So um, open up your Bibles if you're using your phone, um, if you have another gadget, or if you have the physical Bible, let's go to Matthew chapter 26, and I want to read from verse 36 to 45. Allow me to proceed for the sake of time. This is what it says. Um, then cometh Jesus 
Oh, this is the KJV version. Some of you have the NIV, it's okay. Uh, then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Amen. But before that, I want you to see what I was saying um, in verse 35. Um, I think let's, let's go over to, yeah, let's start from verse 34. Uh, let's reverse a bit. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Then cometh Jesus, now this is where we are, with them unto a place called Gethsemane, hmm? a mountain top, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Verse 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. <laughs> and saith unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me just an hour? And verse 41 says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. So we can see here, they have just gone up the mountain. And it's interesting, but we're going to talk about this. But as he goes up, he goes up with all the 12 disciples. But then he gets to a place where he tells the 12 of them, uh, now sit here, remain here, but I want to go with Peter, James, and John, the sons of Zebedee. And, and, I, and I wondered why. Why did he not go with all of them? But then even after going with them, he still told the three, remain here. Okay, while I go, that's another thing, a very important lesson I want us to learn today. While I go and pray, all right? So I just want you to take note of those things. But let's begin. I want to ask you um, a question that the East Africans used to ask each other or tell each other during the East African revival. And there's a story here that I read that's very interesting. It's an illustration I want to use. Early African converts to Christianity were honest and regular in their private devotions. These were people who were committed and yani watu wa maombi, watu wa kegosho. Each one reportedly had a separate spot in the thicket where he would pour out his heart to God. Over the time, the paths to these places became well worn out. Ushenda kuomba mara mob mbaka yani nyasi inaacha kumea. Because wewe utembe huko mara mob sana. Unajua ukitaka kujua mtu aje atembelewa na wageni ama hakuna activity, nyasi huanza kumea, you know? So they were saying, uh, let me continue. As a result, if one of these believers began to neglect prayer, mm, it was soon apparent to the others. And they would kindly remind the negligent one by saying, brother, the grass grows on your path. Mm -hmm. And I remember this. This was really in my high school where I was in Olkejuado because we had a, pl a place of prayer called Powerhouse. That's where we used to go. And, and while it was bushy, there was a clear path. Because believers, also I see you, frequented that place to pray. And I want to ask you, is your room frequented by your presence because you're praying? Are your knees feeling the, the itch because you're regularly praying? Are your hands regularly raised up to God in prayer? Are your eyes frequently closed in meditation to God's word, especially at this season? That's why we want this to be a wake-up call to all of you to say, brother, I hope grass is not growing in your path. Sister, I hope grass is not growing in your path. Oh, ye church of Jesus Christ, I hope grass is not growing in your path. I hope you are frequenting the place of prayer and meditation because we need to watch and pray. Yeah, so the context here, guys, is I think about the floods that are hitting our country and, and 200 plus lives have been lost. Not only that, they have been displaced. Some people don't have homes and food. I think about the economy that is hit hard and the people 
that are struggling to put meals on top of their table to feed their beloved ones. I hear rhetoric, political rhetoric around us. And any wise person can tell this is how it started, you know, with divisions and cracks. And, and if believers are not sensitive to watch and pray, this thing can spiral into violence, you know. So that's why I'm asking, are believers watching and praying? Can we be the kind of people who, as the book of Proverbs chapter, I think it's 23, where it says, the wise see danger and they take precaution, you know. So I, I'm looking at this and my heart is beginning to get heavy. I look at the pandemic right now and the impact it has on our social relationships and especially the church. So right now I'm thinking about believers and I feel heavy in my heart for believers who feel Maze closing day for the church. The church never closes. The church never closes, people. We might be separated and asked to be, you know, isolated in our own homes, but fellowship is alive. Amen. Because Jesus said, the time has now come when people will now worship in spirit and in truth. So we may be separate, but please, I hope you're running online. I hope you're paying for those bundles to listen to the word and, and abide together with fellow believers in the word. So I'm worried because I feel like some believers have taken leave. It's like the church went on leave, but no, brothers, please. The kingdom of God suffers violence. And you have to be violent. You have to be aggressive. I mean, pay the price to consume the word of God. I don't want to take time. So this is, this is where I'm at, people. And I think we need to watch and pray. Why? Because I feel like the church is not equipped for the trials it's facing. I feel like the church is not equipped to harness the opportunities that exist right now. All right? Kuna waseba dona sema maze, mina ngoja skwile tutarudi. Tomorrow does not belong to us, people. You can't be waiting for old wine to fit into new wineskins. I mean, if change has happened, you need to be sensitive and adjust. You see, this is the problem with the disciples. When Jesus left, they got confused. And this is why I'm worried, because one of them, after denying Jesus, um, after betray, be, denying Jesus, he quit Minist, Nikali and the fishing, you know. You look at the, the disciples and they never used to meet as frequently. You'd expect that they, were, would, they would be prepared for this trial, but they were caught unprepared. That's why Jesus was waking them up saying, Maze, at least you're about one hour. One hour, you guys. Wake up, church. I know we are stressed, bored, and frustrated, but watch and pray. Yes. So instead of relaxing, let's pray and engage in intercession. So, but the problem, like I said, is we are exhausted. Um, I know, guys started engaging online and there was excitement, you know, but the excitement to wish, you know, we have a cycle, just like the people of Israel, kuna forgiveness, restoration, maze God and to bless, lakini tukiwa sawa, then we go back then to sinning and all this. So, so I'm worried because our exhaustion is having the better part of us. We are too exhausted to pray, too discouraged to pray, too, too, too afraid to pray. And as a, as a result, we are not prepared enough to, to, to be ready for the trials. We don't have joy to go through trials. We don't have, you know, that, like, Paul, that, like James says, count it all joy. I don't know your fruit, you know. We can't pray effectively. And we might be caught off guard, you know. So the, what is the solution? Jesus in this place gives us a solution for this context. Where we have problems, but when we are supposed to be praying, we are not praying because we are discouraged, we are tired. Like the disciples, walikuwa mechoka. Omesha toka ministry, last supper, mlimani, tena tukeshe. They were tired, their eyes could not just stay awake. But the solution is, dawaya moto ni moto. If you're tired, now pray even more. Yeah, that's why Jesus came and told them, wake up, watch with me and pray. So today I hope that this will be a, a revival for you, a revival for me, that our hearts may learn to watch and pray. So that even in our exhaustion, we may not be found unprepared. You remember when finally the soldiers came for Jesus, uh, Peter was there responding physically, but Jesus rebuked him and told him, hey boss, that's why I was waking you up in the first place. This is not a physical war. It's a spiritual war. 
If I, if I needed soldiers to bail me out, they would come. But this is not about flesh and blood. It's about principalities and powers of darkness that we can bring down because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? So that's why I want to say, watch and pray. So allow me now to take us through the prayer points because this is not a sermon. This is a time of prayer. Number one, we need People who can be counted on. People who can be prepared. People who can be ready for whatever is coming upon them, for whatever they are going to face. So, so it's about preparation. And it's about being on guard. It's about being counted on. Uh, can, can churches rely on their congregants to be in prayer? Can the church, you know, pastor send an SMS and say, I need 10 people to fast and pray. Can he count on you to be amongst those who will pray and wait upon God with him? Can you be counted on? Are you, are you prepared for what's coming? Amen. So I want us to read again Matthew 26 and from verse 36 to 37. It says, then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. Now I'm on the NIV version. Sorry for mixing you up. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Now right there I want to ask, why? Why did Jesus take Peter and the sons of Zebedee? Why did he not go with all of them? You know, many of us right now may think, hmm, maybe Peter, James, and John were the deep ones. But I don't think this was about depth. I don't think this was about position. I think it was about preparation. Because if you look, these are the ones that suffered the most. I want, and I'm answering this from the, the passage in Matthew 20 and from verse 20 to 28. Can we go there? Let's go to Matthew 20. Just go with me uh, to Matthew chapter 20. We find a woman there who is begging Jesus, saying, take my sons, all right? They were also known as the sons of thunder. So, so let's go to Matthew 20. Then came, him, then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, what wilt thou want? I'm still reading. Yeah. She said unto him, grant that this my two sons may sit the one on the right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But what did Jesus say? But Jesus answered and said, you know what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the same baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, we are able. And then he said unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized. Now, I want you to know Jesus is prophetic here, all right? He sees the end. So on you are to mama, the mother wants position. But Jesus is saying, position is not the issue. Are you prepared? All right? So are believers prepared? And, and, and he said, one, you want one to be on my right and on the left, but will they fellowship with me in my sufferings? Will they take up the cross? And this is where I'm at. This is why I'm, I'm thinking that it is not about position. They did not go with Jesus because of position, that these were the select few or the deep ones. No, but because Jesus was saying, but these ones have a cross to carry. I need to make sure you're prepared. And that's why he went with them. And I'm asking you right now, are you prepared? Are you ready? Are you ready for what is going on now? Do you have the fruit of the Spirit? Love, patience, peace, joy, perseverance, endurance, long-suffering. Do believers have these things? And I want us to pray right now. I'm praying that the Lord may prepare you to be a sanctuary for him now in this situation. The Lord wants to use you as a light like a city built up on a hill. The Lord wants to speak through you, believers, brothers and sisters, churches, you listening to me. God wants to use you as an instrument of peace in this time. But are you prepared? Or are you somewhere bothered by your own trial saying, Lord, me, 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 myself and I. But the Lord wants to break you. He wants to use you like Joseph, separate you from people so that he can use you to save the same people. Hallelujah. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. 
right and true, so true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Join me, let's sing. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true. Tell him, prepare me, Lord, with thanksgiving. Yeah, I will be living a sanctuary for you. So let's prepare right now. You see, preparation is found in Ephesians 6 and verse 18. And I just want to focus on that because it talks about putting on the full armor of God. Are you ready, church? Put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the Spirit. And in verse 18, it says, with this in mind, be alert and always keeping, keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Being alert. Yes, we need to watch and pray. So wake up. I want to pray for you right now that even though your hearts are heavy and burdened and even though there's so much going on, even though you're exhausted and frustrated by these trials and difficulties, that you may wake up and pray. Yes, that the Lord may help us to go with him to a higher place. People are seeing chaos and, and, and confusion, but when we go up to the mountain with the Father, we see perspective, the right perspective. We see God at work. We see the grace of God. We see his providence. We see uh, the Lord making a way where there seems to be no way. But Lord, help us. May the Lord help us to be a sacrifice that, that we may put ourselves to say, Lord, if you need somebody to go, I will go. Lord, if you want me to be ready, I'm ready right now. I'm sensitive. I'm alert. Yes. Lord, I want to pray with my brothers and sisters right now. For some of them, you're calling them higher calling them higher to the mountaintop, Lord Jesus. Lord, you're telling them, I want you to stay, stay with me, stay with me. Let's pray. Let's engage in prayer. Be, be alert. Keep watch. Open your eyes. Be sensitive. Lord, invite them to a higher place. I'm praying for churches to come up to a higher place. I'm praying for people in their private chambers to come up to a higher place, oh God, of wisdom and insight and understanding, oh God, that they may see things from your perspective, Lord, that we may be alert that when we see the enemy come, that when we see trials come, when we see deception rise, when we see attacks coming, we can shut them down by saying, no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we can say to the devil, you are defeated. I can see you coming with temptation and deception. I can see you coming with frustration. You want to sift the church. You want to sift the church. Yes, but, but we will remain because Jesus prayed for us in John 17. Yes, Lord, prepare these people, Lord. Prepare that brother, that sister of mine. Prepare them, Lord. For this time, Lord, like Esther, that they can be used for such a time as this, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. But then the second thing, guys, I, I saw is that we need to be vulnerable and open when praying with and for each other. I want us to look at uh, Matthew 26 and verse 38. Reading from the NIV, it says, Then he said to them, Now, guys, this is Jesus, right? My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. You know, I've read that, but I've never thought about it, that Jesus can actually confess to his fellow disciples and say, Mazeni melemewa, Naskia could die. I am overwhelmed. You know, I'm saying this because I feel like one of the reasons why churches are not effective in prayer is because Mazeni wanga fake sana. Kila saa, tunafikiri anganika ukikuja ulizwe, boss uko vipi? Ah, niko fit. You know, and ile, uh, church mnendeleaji had to go strong. We, we don't say the truth. People are not saying, bro, maze, my marriage is in a mess. Maze si jadish. Maze ni mefutwa job. People always want to put up a face. Yani tuonesha ne tuko sawa, you know. And I know, and I'll do something here unplanned and funny, but there was this thing that people used to do and uh, it was a challenge. Unakuja unayeka kamikono hapo, 
Alafu unakuja once ume umengara sasa unaonekana uko and it's okay we are having fun right but can we just be real with one another jesus was real you know when when you misdiagnose a prayer it won't be effective because bro nikikuja nikuulize how can i pray for you and then uniambi ah mimi ni pray yetu that nikwe nikwe too fit nikwe too strong you know but you're not telling me what i should pray for exactly but jesus opened up and said guys i feel like dying i am overwhelmed and so i i, I want us to be vulnerable church let's speak the truth because even jesus spoke to one guy and he told him show me your withered hand don't show me your your strong hand all right but show me your with show instead of showing me your strength show me your weakness that's why james i think 5 and verse 16 says confess your sins one to another and pray for one another so that you may be healed daktari asikupatie sindano ya homa mazeka uko na uko na diarrhea right so let's be open let's say it as it is and this is a brokenness let's be broken before the lord let's be broken but i want to stretch this father but i want you to understand that jesus then even after telling them that he told them stay here but i will go because when jesus was praying he was not saying that for moral support i want you to understand but he was i want you to be prepared because you too will have to carry your own cross think about that You know each one of us has a cross to carry. There is a place for corporate prayer what we are doing now. But there are times you need to go beyond corporate prayer to lock yourself in your room and do business with your father. You see this is why Jesus uh, crossing on the road with a cross on his back. He he saw women weeping for him and he said, "Do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves." Because a time is coming when you too will have to carry your and I wonder will you be able to That's why he said jililie carry your own cross all right so even as we are vulnerable even as we engage in prayer don't stop at corporate prayer you know i'm i'm afraid for believers right now who always are hot because they are with other believers that's why i'm saying the church is being sifted because when you're by yourself are you still praying are you still studying are you still serving by yourself i mean the devil wants to sift and and only the mature christians will stand sober in this time wale wa kutegemea wase 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 i mean you you might not be as effective so mature so let's pray for vulnerability right now yes let's learn the power of corporate prayer but also private prayer that's why in matthew 18 um, and verse 19 it says again truly i tell you that if two of you uh, uh, agree on earth about anything they ask it will be done for them by my father in heaven so right now man i want to say bumilia roho yangu majaribu ni kama moto yanayochoma imani yangu e baba naomba unisa the thing bumilia Roho yangu majaribu ni kama moto yanayochoma imani yangu e baba naomba unisaidie Let's pray Lord I want to pray a special prayer for for the church for my brothers and sisters Lord help us to be broken help us to be humble help us to be open oh God I pray that people may pray for each other but they may also be able to talk and not just you know shallow talk but deep talk let people be open and vulnerable with each other to share the truth about what they're going through lord I pray that you may crush the pride of believers that sometimes leads us astray we see an example of our father Jesus almighty and all powerful a miracle worker saying with his own mouth that I am overwhelmed to the point of death Lord I long for when believers will gather and share one to another. It is not a competition for who's more righteous. It's not a competition for who's more wise with words and knowledgeable about scripture. Lord we we want to cut the crap as a church. This is not about competition but about Lord being there for one another, complimenting one another, Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord. I pray that you give us love and brokenness that we may be open and real. 
But again, Lord, I pray for many believers who, who are used to being together and by themselves, Lord, they grow cold. I pray that this may be an opportune time for them to develop roots. As the Bible tells us, be deeply rooted in Christ, oh God. I pray that you may revive us. Lord, wake us up. We, we, are, we are waking up to pray, to watch and pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So as I come now to, to my last point, I want to say the words that I've been saying over and over. Watch, watch and pray. Watching here is physical, literal. You have to look. What can you see? What can you see in this nation? What can you see in your church? What can you see around you, in your family, in your marriage? Don't be aloof. You have to watch and, and pray based on, on that information, that, that you have vital information to carry on forward to warfare. That's why I said Proverbs, the prudent see danger, 22 and verse 23, and they take refuge, but the simple keep going and they pay the penalty. I want to end with this, church. You see, Esther, if we look at Esther, chapter 4 and from verse 13 to 14, Esther was giving excuses. Esther was saying, um, I know there's a problem, but it's not my problem. But Mordecai told her, listen here, girl, if we die, you die. You know, some of us are thinking, well, me bado ni konado, ya kuniskuma. Maybe some of us are looking at the politicians taking each other back and forth and you're thinking, ah, well, there's no violence, there's no smoky tires on the road, hakuna tuko sawa. But I want you to understand that if something starts there, it will get to you. If someone pees upstream and you're fetching water downstream, you're going to drink that stuff, right? So that's why we need to pray. And I want to read Esther 4, verse 13 to 14. He sent back to her this reply. Do not imagine that because you are in the king's palace, you alone will escape the fate of all the Jews. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows but that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. And this is what I hope we will do. Esther woke up. She was now alert and she said, Alas, this is what she said to Mordecai, verse 15. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and assemble all the Jews who can be found in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink day and night for three days. And I and my maidens will fast as you do. After that, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. I hope you'll wake up, people. Wake up. Be prepared. Watch and pray. Jesus, the Spirit is saying, arise. Do, I know you're tired, but thou am mortal and immortal. Wake up. I will give you the strength. I am your strength. Wake up and pray. Let's, let's wait on the Lord. Yes. Heri wam to my neo buana. Amen. So I want to pray even as we sing that song. Bernard, if you can just lead us in that song. I want to pray for strength. Yes. He can do it. Pray. Father, we come to you knowing you are able. You are the God of all victory, the God of salvation, the God of healing, the God of deliverance, Father. I'm praying for strength, Lord, for your people, that they may keep watch, that they may watch and pray. 
Lord, some of us are spiritually fatigued. Some of us are spiritually dry. But Lord, let us read your word and experience a revival. As the Bible says that your word revives our hearts, Lord. So thank you for this time of prayer, oh God. And I pray that even as I challenge these listeners to carry on from corporate prayer into private prayer, that they may prevail in prayer. Lord Jesus, I pray that we may be open, countable, oh God, but prepared for what is coming. Lord Jesus, I also pray that my believers and my fellow friends and all over the world can become vulnerable, oh God, to say what is happening to them so that we can pray effectively, God. But again, I pray for the church to be awake, the church to be alert, oh God. We don't want to shoot from the hip or to be caught off guard. Yes, yes, we want to be ready. We want to say we are ready. We are alert. We have discernment from above. We are ready. We, we have the full armor of God ready to engage in Jesus' name. Right now, I want to pray for your needs. Thank you for joining us. Lord, even as I pray, I don't know what my brothers and sisters are going through. Lord, maybe for some it's a marriage issue. Some it's a health issue. Some it's a financial issue. Lord Jesus, we lay these burdens before you. Provide, Lord. Reach out to each one of us. Meet us at our point of need. For you are God and you are good. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, I want to thank you for hanging out with us. I know probably it has taken some time, but thank you for, for making the sacrifice. We want to end as we, you know, as you, as you leave this and as you disconnect Let's remember, Heri wam to my neo buana. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Heri wam to my neo buana. Wam to my neo buana. Heri wam to my neo buana. Amani watapata. Amani. Heri wam to my neo buana. Wam to my neo buana. Heri wam to my neo watapata nguvu watapata oh heri wam to my neo bwana wam to my neo bwana heri wam to my neo bwana watapata baraka hallelujah god bless you god bless you see you on sunday let's gather together oh we have a a, a, a youth event on uh, Saturday called Engage um, and another young adult service in the evening so you can join us for that as well. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Watch and pray. Amen. <laughs>